So let's get started. I'm going to clean up the table and I'm going to put everything to hyperlapse so you are not getting bored and if I have anything important to say to share with you I'm going to come back to real time and then explain and then go back to time lapse or hyperlapse. The installation of the horizontal and vertical stabilizer was super easy, no glue needed. You just have to make sure that you have the longest screw here and you first put the horizontal stabilizer in a slot. There are two plastic pins that go in the front, actually maybe one I, I forgot, but it just sits very flat. And then you make sure that the tail wheel, the tip of that controller goes into that hole on the bottom plastic piece of the rudder so it turns with it and then you just press the vertical stabilizer into its slot above the horizontal stabilizer and use the longest screw just from the bottom to tighten it and it is super tight so I thought it, won't, it wouldn't hold but there's another peg in the front plastic peg into plastic peg that holds it in place so this is super strong it's not coming off so you don't have to in my opinion you don't have to uh, do anything to like a uh, gluing to keep it there. So this will give you the option to take it off very easily with one screw. So let's continue. The 9 gram servos fit perfectly into these slots. The only thing is the regular servo wires are not long enough to reach over here. So what I did was I had these 7 inch long servo extensions and when I added that you know, it just comes over here where the wing is installed. So I can easily plug these into the receiver from over here and then just put it here. So and you're going to need probably a wire to pull it through. There is some access on the bottom here through that hole, the vent hole, to help guide the wire. But then you are going to need something, unless you are very lucky, to pull it through that space inside. So I just pulled it out now, one of them, and then I'm going to do the next one. So do you see? It is going from the center. So they, they left some openings here to fit the wires through. And those openings are large enough for these uh, plugs to go in. So I'm going to do the next with this one and then install the servo arms and servo horns and all together and then add the, these control rods and complete the assembly for the back and then just move on to the wing.
the servo, servo arms, control rods, as well as control holes all for elevator and rudder have all been installed. What I did was to install the servos in their place. I only put some hot glue over here. So this will make it easier to remove them if I have to. I didn't put anything underneath, which will be difficult to pull out. So I can always heat this section of the hot glue and remove the servo if it ever mal malfunctions. The second thing is I had to make the holes to the, for the control horns a little bigger. So I have these uh, little drills, hand, you know, finger drills, and I have to make the holes a little larger so that these connectors, brass connectors, rotate freely, which is going to be important. So they should not be really tight here. And so I did that with the last, you know, top hole and installed it over there. Then I put a little bit of blue treadlock compound to this little nut that goes to this side. And then for a good measure, while it was rotating, so that it doesn't move out from vibration, I also capped it with a little bit of hot glue on top of that little nut. So it's not going anywhere. And then I passed the control rod through and then just put this lightly, this screw that's going to hold the control rod, and then installed the servo arm the hole is the second one from the, from the tip and the, the thickness is good for the holes. And then just uh, screw that servo control arm in for both. Now it is time to test the control. So I'm going to connect the receiver to the ESC and then connect the battery, bind it to my TX16S and then just make sure that everything is working as they are supposed to. So I complete the binding process, as you can see, Elevator is moving the correct direction, up, down, and rudder is moving the correct direction as well, right, left. I'm just going to center them now, and also the motor is working. I took the prop off, of course. Rotating in the correct direction. If you look from front, it's counterclockwise as it's supposed to be. I just realized that this plate holding the real rear assembly in place at the back of the fuselage has been installed crooked. You see there's a gap on this side, there's no gap on this side. Because of that, when the rudder is straight like this, the wheel is facing towards right in a kind of strange crooked way. So what I'm going to do is cut this off, there's some glue, it has been glued in. Cut this off, peel it off, and then you know clean up that area and then glue it back on with the hot glue. So I could not separate the whole plate from the plane because there is a tab going between these two halves of the fuselage. But what I was able to do is like separate this and then bend it back because this was, uh, there was no gap. And then fill that gap with hot glue so it won't come back. So now it is completely flat and this wheel, although it's like a little crooked, it's still facing forward. So it should be okay, I think. And I can do, you know, slight trim when taking off with the rudder. So this should be okay.
I would like to give one caution. When you're installing the aileron servos, make sure that this control rod is facing the correct direction. I initially put this below or towards the fuselage, just pointing out the other way. And then when it reached the control horn, it was at an angle. So it's much better that it is straight from here, from the servo arm to the control horn, because then there is no stress being applied to any of the components. Like this is as stress as it gets. So in that case, I had to install the control rod into the servo arm coming out on top on the outside of the wing, not inside. And then this little clevis or whatever you call it, the fastener is also facing, the brass side is facing the tip of the wing, the outside of the wing. And that way this is completely straight. So now what I need to do is connect the both aileron servos via this uh, Y adapter. By the way, this doesn't come in the kit. So you have to provide your own extension cables for the elevator and rudder and your own Y cable for the aileron servos. So they are going to come together at the center, go inside and connect to the receiver. So I'm going to do that and center the servos and put the little screws in to attach these and then cut the excess wire or the control rod off. I would like to point out a very minor issue, which is, do you see I put the wing halves together using that carbon fiber spar? And they are not completely coming together. If I press in the, in the back together, the front opens up and vice versa. So the reason for that is the tubes that go into the wings, they are sticking out slightly. So what I'm going to do is file it, file these on both sides flush with the rest of this uh, wing half on this wood surface and that way the two wing halves will come together perfectly. After filing the tips of those tubes that gap is almost completely gone so now this wing is ready to be installed on the plane. So now all controls are working as they are supposed to. Except I think uh, this is reversed, but I can reverse the ailerons very easily, but all the control surfaces are moving fine. And their deflections are quite a bit, so I'm going to set rates, three rates, 100%, 75, and 50, and see which works best for takeoffs, landings, and doing aerobatics. I just want to point out that the fit of the wing halves onto the fuselage is very nice and tight. Everything aligned very well. This is at the center line, that center spot on both sides. And the locking mechanism is perfect. There is a plastic collar, two collar that goes in. And these are you know, plastic, not screws, but I can show you what, what they are. Basically, they look like this. You, Put that on like this and then rotate it and now it's locked on both sides and you can easily remove it if you have to i'm not planning to but this is really nice so far i'm really impressed with the quality of this kit i only had like two small issues one was you know this back plate was a little to the side so it was holding the tail gear 
crooked, so I fix it easily. And the other one was just filing the tubes that come to the spot, the center, so that this fit is ni now nice and tight. Let me show you what I have been trying to do in the last hour or so. So this motor that I tried to install, the Rimfire 370, has a very different pattern. I tried to create a motor mount using wood, but it didn't work well. And this was still too short to clear the cowling. So I had another old motor, which I had in my uh, one of my previous... Uh, airplanes and maybe about 10 even more years ago this is an exceed rc alpha series motor and it is a 28 by 36 so it is quite larger than what is recommended but it the fit is perfect let me show you the fit is perfect it was just rubbing over here just slightly and i i kind of sanded it off and right now it is just coming out like this a little bit and the prop will be over here. So this will be perfect. Although it's going to be heavier than what is recommended. But I'm not too worried about that because I can always slide the battery back. There is quite a bit space in here. So I should be able to adjust it. And uh, let me just give it a quick, although it's not complete. And right now, yes, it is when I put my fingers over that area where the spar is yeah, it is slightly no heavy it feels like but you know the battery is in the front so I can use a little larger battery and push it back if there's quite a bit room on the back and this is this fit this four screw four hole mount perfectly without any modification or whatsoever So I use one of these 8 by 6 inch electric propellers, tin electric propellers that I had and it fit perfectly and the good thing is also the blue of the motor and the spinner matches the blue of this model. So I haven't put these yet but you know once I put these on it's going to be perfect. This is it folks, the assembly of the non-multiplex fun cup, although it says multiplex, has been completed and tomorrow the weather is expected to be very nice, although windy. So I'm planning to do the maiden flight. If the propeller that I installed is a little too small, I'm going to take a couple larger ones with me so I can just change them on the field and get the best performers out of this. Please stay tuned for that video. Hope to see you on the next episode. Stay safe and healthy. Take care. Bye-bye.